Hi guys, it's Tim from Advanced In Car Tech again. Um, we've got a brand new camera that we've just been sent by the guys at Vicovation in Taiwan. They've seen our reviews, um, particularly of the Roadhawk and the Blackview videos on our YouTube channel, and they've really wanted us to get on board with their, their, their cameras. So they've sent us a WF-1 to get started with a, a couple more cameras on the way. And I have to say, with it being a new brand that's getting interested in us, I'm pretty excited to see um, the capabilities of the Vico WF1 Smart. It looks, I haven't, I haven't even opened it yet. Um, I wanted to save it for you guys to see what I'm seeing as I'm going through it. And we hope to go over some, some tech specs, power the camera up, connect to the phone, because this camera is very smart orientated, um, which is really, really cool. So let's get straight into it. So. Nice orange box, kind of like the SC500 sort of style, comes in this uh, cellophane wrapping uh, stuff and it, in the side it goes over a, a few of the, um, the features, hopefully because the cellophane isn't too uh, shiny for you, um, we can see it there. Um, so we've got about the compression, that's full HD, it's 160 degree lane, uh, sorry, 160 degree view. It's got lane departure warning, new style of lens uh, sensors and lenses uh, with a three megapixel CMOS lens uh, sensor, sorry, um, with some pretty, from what I've been told, um, some pretty awesome quality both in the daytime and nighttime. And it's got this uh, what's called WDR, which is wide dynamic range. So I'm really excited to uh, to get to grips with. Um, and they're also showing about this. Um, some new software which is called Pushcam. Now I'm, I'm really excited again to, to, um, to go over these apps and the features where basically if you've got a file that you need to save you get the it gets sent to your phone and then when you get home and connect your Wi-Fi it will automatically push it onto a cloud server which is pretty cool. Um, and the there's this other thing called driving curve. Now, this is all about how well you drive and to make sure you see if you can drive any better. It's kind of like the Nike fuel bands, but for cars, really. Um, so, yeah, right. Um, let us take the wrapper off and see what we've got. So let's pull that off. Nice, good quality box. I'm a big fan of the orange. Um, it's a bit different and it looks very, very neat and tidy. So it's got a sleeve. Pull the sleeve off. Um, we got some info on the back here about its its specs and stuff like that, um, which we're going to go over later on. And it's also got a list of its what it's got inside of so the accessories. Um, so you've got your Wi-Fi device, uh, the WF-1, charger, USB cable, sticker bracket, and also a suction mount. Right. So the box inside is going over, around the outside, is talking about push cam and how you can get it onto your phone and how it will work. So it is definitely worthwhile reading over that. Um, I probably might do a separate video for the push cam service so that you can just go onto it and, and watch that without having to watch the whole review. But I'll also put some information uh, into this video. I think it's a really cool idea and if it's if it's gonna work, it's gonna work really, really well. You just push one button, it uploads it, done, dusted, and then don't have to worry about anything else. Um, so yeah, right, okay. So the Vicovation, simply lively, um, on the outside of the box is just some real kind of quick info on what you need to do to get yourself going. You have to have the Vico Viewer app installed on either your iPhone or your Android phone, both in their respective stores. Um, and also you have to have, the card. The cameras don't come with the cards from memory, so it's worthwhile, which isn't a bad thing, because you, may, you, you wanna get a decent card in there, so always go for like a SanDisk or a Samsung 32 gig, uh, and then you're all good and it tells you how to connect and also that sort of stuff. And then just some uh, some notices here um, about how the camera is unique, the power is unique to itself and all that sort of stuff. So let's pull out the shields and see what we've got. Right, so we have um, the micro USB cable. That is, uh, well, does exactly what it says on the tin. 
We have also got a sticky pad and a spare. Um, a nice, big, beefy car charger. So this will go in your cigarette jack or you can have it professionally hardwired behind the scenes. Um, there's a bit of a safety warning on here saying that it's only designed for the WF1, but that's just common sense really. Um, have a look. Oh, right, so this is the sticker mount, I believe. Um, So there's the sticker mount. So presumably it's gonna go on the windscreen like that and then the camera slots into it and you're good to go. Um, suction mount, it's, it's a nice idea. It means you can move the camera into a different car um, and put it wherever you want. I'm not a big fan of cameras that have suction mounts just because I think they look a bit in the way, a bit ugly, um, but this is quite a nice discrete sort of suction mount. So we'll try and get that some pictures of this installed with the camera and also with the normal sticky mount. Okay, um, so let's see what else we've got in here. Um, so in here we've got the warranty card with just the serial numbers and the part numbers, where it came from, all that sort of stuff. Um, We've got an installation guide. Um, let's just sort of focus out. This is more for the DIYers out there that want to just buy it and fit it in their cars. Um, just going over, it's all pretty simple stuff really and how you go about installing it. And it tells you how to power it on and what other stuff it can do. So it's all pretty standard how it all works, and then there's like this graph uh, table here, sorry, that goes over what all the different um, LEDs mean. So stable pulse means normal recording, LED flash twice and short pause, Wi-Fi connection, and all that sort of stuff. Right, okay. We've also got here um, a more of an in-depth guide by the looks of it so it shows you how um, all of the camera settings work because this camera is quite unique that you set it up um, using the app so it's a very app orientated camera which is cool because most people have them um, and it goes over how to download it onto your onto your smartphone um, how the chip works and powering it all on it's actually quite in depth actually which is very very good the English is good it's not the broken English um, that we've come to see from Blackview and that sort of thing um, so what's this this is about how the app works and the preview does so what we'll do is we'll get a video of this um, later on how you connect it to your smartphone and also how you change the settings and stuff like that uh, we'll get it rigged up in here uh, so you can see that for yourself um, more about how the settings work, um, alert emails, that could be quite cool, and some other bits. Right, and let's go. So, this is, um, whilst we're getting into it, is what we can expect in terms of recording times. So, if you've got it at 1080p, a recording at 30 frames per second, you're getting 450 minutes from it um, so that's not too bad really um, obviously it's recording at a high rate it's got some a lot of data in it um, so don't don't be too put off about it like I said if you do a lot of driving um, it's going to overwrite itself anyway um, but yeah not too bad not too bad at all okay so let's get this all out of the way and then we can move the accessories to one side. Okay. So um, this is where the main car, the camera lives. Uh, it just shows you how it's all working, that sort of thing, um, which is good. So here's the camera. So nicely packaged in the box, looks good. 
get the focus right so you guys can see it. Um, so let's take it out of its housing. Again, the safety notice about using the right chargers and that sort of stuff. Okay, cool. This looks like a very nice, slim camera. It's doing exactly what it needs to be doing. It's not too big, it's not too bulbous. Um, it looks very, very discreet actually, which is nice. Uh, especially if you've got it at the front of your car, you don't want it being showing off too much. And um, yeah, it's, it's quite light as well, which is, which is nice. Um, nice, firm buttons. Right, so, uh, Let's talk about some of what we can see. So we've got here, which is where the micro SD card goes in, nice and easy accessible, especially if you're mounting it in the UK when we're doing it in front of the rear view mirror to the left hand side. Uh, we've got another HD output, which is cool, uh, USB for the power, and that you can do the, to connect to your computer and that sort of stuff. And obviously the main alert button here. Now this ring around here, when we power it up, it will it will show all the lighting and that sort of stuff. You push that, and like the Roadhawk, it's going to power on. And I didn't even know, but it's obviously got some sort of charge in it because, as you saw then, um, it did light up. So there must be some sort of uh, capacitor in there um, for if you if you have problems and the power gets cut, that sort of thing, so it can save itself. Now. The main thing that I want to talk about is this thing called wide uh, dynamic range. Now, this is really exciting that it can give you some very, very crisp footage both during the day and also at the night time. I'm going to get the best way to talk about it is to just get some footage later on and um, we'll, we'll go over it and, and see what it looks like. So, um, there's a few of the stats about it. It's uh, a 6G megapixel lens. Um, I think it's three megabytes from what I remember reading. Um, it's the the view angle is quite a, quite a bigger one than than what some cameras out there. It's 160 degrees, um, which is obviously quite wide. But I'm guessing it's going to give you that view of everything that's going on, and if there is an incident from the side, at least then you can you can see what's going on. Um, it can record at 1080 at 30 frames per second. It can also record at 720 uh, at 60 frames per second. So you're going to get some super um, quality footage from it. So that's always good. They do suggest, though, not many manufacturers do, but they say that you should really be using a class 8 or a class 10 micro SD card. Most camera manufacturers just say bung any old card in, but they're specifically saying that you need to put in the uh, the class 10, which is which is fair enough. Now, as I mentioned before, it does need an app to control it. So you, there's no point getting this camera if you don't have a smartphone, either on iOS or Android, because you want to be able to change the settings, you want to be able to pull the footage back, and you want to do all that sort of thing. Now, there's always been a thing about heat issues with dash cams. Now we've got some ventilation here on the side which is said to meant to be quite good. Now the camera itself should be able to go up to around 65 degrees C. Um, the camera will shut itself down uh, after that point which is quite a good thing because you don't want it melting itself out or anything like that so that is all good in my book. Now it's got the usual sort of stuff where it's got the G sensors so that you can see if you're driving too hard, too fast, to the left, to the right and all that sort of stuff and um, it's, it's just the standard stuff really. So the one big thing as well that I wanted to talk about was some of the apps that they've got with it. Um, so there's the, the driving curve there's, which is basically the camera itself can monitor how you're driving to suggest improvements and gives you a rating. If you've got a Nike fuel band, it's pretty similar to that and it looks and works very well. So, and there's also the push cam app, which as I mentioned before, will allow you to, when you push this button here, it will, it will lock the file that it's recording and then it will allow the file to automatically upload to your phone when it's next connected. And then when you get home, uh, either on your Wi-Fi or you can set it so that it's 3G or 4G 
it will automatically push that file into the cloud ready for you to view on your co computer, which is really, really cool. I really like that idea. Now, the Pushcam is, is a free cloud service, so your smartphone will help you back up emergency recording through the, view, the Vico Viewer and the Pashcam app, um, and I think it's going to be a winner. It's one of the first cameras out there to offer this cloud support. Now, as I mentioned before, is that you do need to have the smartphone, um, so what we can do is just quickly run through the Vico Viewer app. I haven't got the camera connected at the moment, but we'll do that in the next part. So, Vicovation. Just a quick warning, and they're obviously showing about the the driving curve app that they they want you to use as well. Um, you, there's not really much you can do until the camera is connected, but I suggest that before you get the camera, you download the app and make sure it's ready to go for when you want to use it. So what we'll do now is we will get the camera hooked up to the power supply inside so that we can fire it up and see how we get on with it. Right then guys, so in the next part of this um, review video for the Vico WF1 Smart, we're going to power it up inside, have a look to see what happens, go through the settings through the app on the iPhone, have a look at the driving curve and just generally see how she goes. So I've got an in indoor 12 volt power supply, so I'm going to pop the power cable in. And it's worth noting that this um, micro USB cable connection is a nice right angle connection. So from an installer's perspective, it means that this cable can be hardwired up behind the headline trim or into the rear view mirror trim so that you've got as little cable as visible as possible. So what we'll do is we'll whip her in. I've already put um, an, uh, a class 10 micro SD card in here. They do recommend that you use a minimum of eight gigabytes and it has to be a class 10. They've, they've really pointed that out on all of the blurb inside to do with the, the Wi-Fi element and also for the high quality recordings that they use. You're obviously gonna want a decent card on this for the, for the read write. So let's fire her up and see what happens. So let's plug the in. So we've got that nice white LED ring on the back, and hopefully we should hear something soon. System loading. Recording started. Okay, so we've got the camera recording at the moment. Um, you can tell that because this ring on the back is kind of pulsating, which is a very nice glow. But maybe at night time, it's probably not the best, especially when you're driving. You don't want it to be going too crazy, and especially if it's in park mode. Now, I did read somewhere that they've released a firmware update that you can turn this off, this, this feature off, which is a good thing from my perspective. I like to have a camera in my car so that it's not causing any problems, no lights. I just want it there doing what it's meant to do. So what we'll do is we'll put that down. We'll get the iPhone out and we shall connect to it. So they said that the, you have to pair it up first, which is just kind of the standard sort of thing. So let's go here. So Wi-Fi, Vico WF1. Now from memory, they've given the passcode a, a, a numeric value. So the, the number for this one is Eight seven six five four three two one. So nice and easy for you to remember. So let's join that. Right, so the phone is now switching across to the Vico WF1. Let's just wait for it to pair, and you can see next to my signal indicator that we're connected. So let's come out of there swipe across Vico viewer now application connected recording disabled so one of the things is is when you're connected to the app the the camera is going to stop recording which is fair enough you're usually only going to be using this app when you're at a standstill anyway so it's not a big deal so warning for your safety please don't operate Vico WF1 with smartphone app while driving distracted driving may lead to serious injury or death which is very very true okay 
So let's go in. So we'll go. We'll mention about the driving curve in a moment. So let's go get a live feed. See what we can see. Okay. So I'm going to try and hold this. Move the camera about, and you can hopefully see me with the camera and my iPhone talking. So it's a good way of getting your adjustments ready and right so that you are at the right angle and all that sort of stuff. So good use, doesn't need to be amazing quality on the iPhone, it's more for a, just to see what you're looking at. So my videos, so it's showing off the videos here, um, camera videos, let's click that, see what happens. Got the camera recording at the moment. Um, so let's turn it down. So the streaming quality is very good. Um, on the black views especially, they did, for some reason, it used to take ages and ages to stream the video, maybe because there's just too much data over that small connection. Um, we can sp spin it around. Uh, I think I have to say with the lock on my iPhone. Let's have a look. Yep. So play again. And we can zoom in. Uh, maybe that's only from the, when it's on the side. So, and also by the looks of it, we can save. So, I'm just making sure that you guys can see it. So, let's focus in properly on the iPhone. So, it's in blue writing, top right hand corner, push save, and I guess it's saved. It hasn't said it hasn't. So, back, phone videos. Ah, syncing. Right. So, it's now trying to save the video file to my phone, um, obviously depending on the settings because we haven't checked that yet, it might might take a little while to do that, um, so let's just see if we can just, the colours on the iPhone aren't helping with the, the, the focus, so apologies. Um, so let's go back in whilst it's doing that, settings, camera settings, video mode 1080p at 30, Cool, 720p at 60 and 720p at 30. It's going to be really cool to see what the footage quality is like, especially at 720p at 60 frames per second. Exposure, okay, I'm not the world's greatest um, guru on cameras and exposure, so I'm guessing that's good to have all of that. Now, night enhancement mode, this is what's called WDR. I really suggest that you have a play with this to see what's best for you and your area. Now, some of the footage that I've already seen from this, especially in Taiwan driving about, is incredible at night. It's really crisp, really, um, really pucker quality. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try footage, oh, the video's been saved. I'm gonna try and get some videos at night time of this at standard and also at high so that we can see the difference. Let's go back, system settings, set time from phone, that's cool. Automatic recording, enabling mic, audio alert language. Um, well, we're obviously English. Oh, but that's good because you can switch between Chinese, Russian, and German. Uh, I don't know what happened to the other languages. Maybe they will um, sort them out at a later date. Voice volume. I'm always keen on keeping it as low as possible. I don't want it going crazy at me in the car, so let's save it as that. LED silent mode. Right, so this is what we were talking about earlier. So if we hit that... It's applying the setting. Sorry about the focus. Let's try again. Okay. Right. Ro rotate video 180 degrees. Awesome. So if you've got it upside down, um, it's going to do it. And I've just noticed here that whilst we're connected, the camera's pulse two flashes, which must mean it's in Wi-Fi mode. Okay. Video text overlay. This is another cool feature that I like about this, is that I can change the text to whatever I want so that it will put it on the video. So let's do our web address, www.advanced. Oh, so you can only do a few characters. So let's just do AICT for advanced in car technologies. Uh, send, so it's sending it over across. Wi-Fi, you can change your SSID, the Wi-Fi key, which is good. I always suggest that you do that um, because you obviously don't, if some, you don't want somebody knowing the password and getting into your camera and stealing all your footage. Wi-Fi channel, 
so you can change the channels, uh, auto off. I would always say have it auto off because you don't need it. Um, so what's this? Warning, after Wi-Fi disabled, you may press emergency button for two seconds and release the switch on Wi-Fi again. You may only switch LDWS on off by Vico Viewer app when Wi-Fi is not always on. Okay, confirm. Applying settings, no problems. So system, back out, and we can also format the SD card from the camera. I always suggest take it out, put it in your computer, format it that way. So systems, G sensor settings, crash detection, um, on and off, and you can change the sensitivity. Alert email settings. So, warning, enabling email alert requires your smartphone to be set up as a personal hotspot. Please enter the correct hotspot information, exit the application, and enable your Wi-Fi hotspot. Once you hear the Wi-Fi disconnect message, the WF1 will attempt to connect to the personal hotspot. So, this is a feature that will allow you, if you have an accident or if something's going on, you can get the camera to automatically send the footage or pictures to wherever you want it. So you can change the email address in here and if you've, you've got to put in your personal hotspot information in there so and send it to the car, which we'll, we'll see if we can try it out. I don't want to make this review video too long because I expect people will get bored. Um, it's better to just get the camera and have a play, to be honest, and see what it can do. Right, settings. Okay, so LDWS, which is the Lane Departure Warning System. So the camera is already calibrated before it comes through from the, well, when it comes from the manufacturer. But this allows you to calibrate it yourself so that you can basically teach it. Um, if, it, if you're coming out of your zone, which is quite good because you, if you do do a lot of driving, and especially at night, you want to make sure that you're not obviously moving lanes, you're falling asleep, all that sort of thing. So it has the voice notifications and it will remind you if you're moving lanes. Um, you push, the way it works on this camera is once it's enabled, you can um, push the button on the back of the camera and hold it for two or three seconds to activate or deactivate the function, which is quite a nice feature. I'm not sure how many people will use it, but it is there. So you can go in here, settings, enabled, apply settings, and calibration. Now this will, I will use this as an example. So you get two kind of lines. So align the top bar with the horizon and the bottom bar with the car hood. So this is so that it knows what it's looking at. So let's put that a bit closer and we'll move the camera out a bit. Let's try and line it up with what my desk is. Obviously because it's a 160 degree lens, you are getting a bit of fisheye effect, which we need to take into account. So maybe once your unit is installed in your car, this is something that you would do to just make sure it knows what it's doing. So we'll come out of that. <laughs> and done, um, apply. I'm gonna turn mine back off because I don't want it to do anything just yet. So let's come out of there and system information. So it's telling us the app version, if it's calibrated, the model, how much is free in the memory card and its firmware ID. So that is awesome. So let's just have a look back into the videos, uh, phone videos and it's here. So what happens if we hold nothing? So let's just pause this. Right, so up here, we've got the ability, uh, once this bit moves, um, let's see if we can get rid of that bar. Okay, so that's a bit weird where the bar at the top won't let us do what we want it to do. So we'll just turn it down so that it's not interrupting what we're doing. Um, so we've got Facebook, um, because I'm connected to the camera as well as the through the Wi-Fi, I obviously can't upload it to Facebook. But there is a slight change that you can do into the settings, which I'll post up on the description of how you can get the the 3G access to work at the same time as the internet. But you can do this when you get at home if you really want to save your your data network um, usage, etc. And the same is for YouTube. Um, so right. So what we might do actually, let us come out of here and this is the next part so this is called driving curve so this is basically the Nike fuel band sort of way of working out to see if you're driving economically or not if you're driving too fast braking too hard turning around corners too crazy so I've already got the app installed in my phone so let's just cross over um, driving curve crossover road safety with video surveillance 
and refine your driving behavior. So let's start the driving converve. Kind of connect to your camera, please disconnect. Right, okay. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna disconnect from the camera. Vico WF1, turn that off. And come out and we're gonna go into driving curve. Right. Okay, so what we're gonna do is lots of things going on in here. Fuel safety, do not use, okay. Right, so. Disconnected. Okay, so we've disconnected. It's gone back into recording. So let's just quickly, whilst we're doing that. Right, so this has been on for a good 15 minutes now and it's not actually that warm. There's a bit of heat coming from this area where the read write is going on. Not very much from here. So that is a good start. So let's just look at this. Um, log in, uh, skip and log in later. Let's just do that for the time being. So this is gonna, let's push start. And I guess what this is actually doing is rather than linking with the camera itself, it's just seeing how well you drive like this, basically using your GPS data. So I can't really do much without being in the car. Um, I'm not sure how useful this is gonna be. If you were really trying to keep your fuel in, ta in touch, sorry, um, and not drive too fast and all that sort of thing, maybe it's a useful thing to have. Um, let's have a look, stop driving, stop. So, yeah, it could be something that's quite useful in the UK, or it could just be a bit of fun to see how well you're driving. Uh, you'd obviously need to place this cat, the, this phone somewhere neatly so that it can get GPS signal, etc., etc. But let's have a look. Uh, please log in for to activate. Okay. Well, we don't really. Let's see if we can log in. Okay. Right. So I'm going to log in with Facebook. Um, would like to access your profile and photos. I don't know why it wants to look at my photos, but there we go. Right, so here's me logged in. Um, apparently my world ranking so far is 2,117 out of 4,243 people. Okay, right, so let's go and have a look in here. Hi Tim Borrell, use your dream car as cover photo. Well, you could just use your picture of your car. Uh, it's got some stats, friends, achievements, that sort of thing. World Championship. Now, because this app is very new to the UK and it's something that Vicovation are obviously trying to do, so there's quite a few people that are obviously doing it at the moment, which is kind of cool, mostly in Europe. Let's see who else is in the UK. Um, so this chap is number one in the UK. Well done. Um, let's come out of here. Let's look in there. Trip log, this could be quite handy, especially if you're doing a lot of journeys and you want to keep an eye on your stats, that sort of thing. Um, let's have a look here. Friends, let's see if any of my friends are doing it. Probably not because it's such a new app. Let's come out of there. And what's this one down here? Achievement, so kind of like on PlayStation and Xbox. You get... Right, so you probably just heard that the Vico WF1 has just turned off the Wi-Fi, which is cool. So we've also noticed here that the LED silent mode has come on, so it's not pulsing, it's just a constant dim LED light. We'd have to look at that in the night time to see what it's like. So let's get back to this app. Come out, settings. Right, so it's got all my information there. Miles per hour, good. It knows when I'm born and all that sort of stuff. Cool. Right, so I think the next thing that we need to do is we need to get the camera in the car, get some footage and see how we're playing. I'm gonna try and get uh, 30 seconds of normal driving in the daytime at 1080 and at 720p with 60. And I'm also gonna try and get the um, see how the WDR, which is the wide dynamic range, um, to, to get that really high quality image at night time uh, to see how it works. Um, I know I said earlier on in the video I was going to talk about the push cam, but 
the manufacturers I've been in contact with over the last few days, they've been having issues with getting the app into the UK app store. So as soon as it's in, I'm gonna do a separate video um, on how the push cam service works, because I actually think it's a really clever, clever idea. So we'll go into that next, uh, well, when the next video is released. Okay, so we've just gone over the um, use of the app. Um, so I thought it was worthwhile just showing how this uh, this trigger button down here worked before we put it in the car, just so that we can see how it works. Now, if you, we were talking about the emergency lock feature, which is a pretty cool feature, um, and also how to activate the lane departure warning and the Wi-Fi and all that sort of thing. So at the moment, the camera is still recording, has been for quite a while now, and it's still not getting that warm. So what we'll do is we'll hold it for two seconds to start off with, which should be the lane departure warning. Lane departure warning enabled. So it's enabled, so if I move out of the zones and in the lanes and all that sort of stuff, it's presumably going to tell me about it. Um, let's just turn it off again. Lane departure warning disabled. Okay, so we're disabled. So now we're driving down the road, imagine that, and we have an incident or see something that we want to make sure gets locked away as an emergency file, that sort of thing. So we're going to push it once and see what happens. Emergency record activated. So now the, the triangle is flashing and it's going to do that for about 30 seconds whilst it's going back over the last... 30 seconds worth of recording to save it into the into the memory card and lock it away so that it can't be overwritten or something like that. Now, when we go into the push cam app later on in my next video, we're going to be talking about how this really works for you because in theory what should happen is this video is now being logged as an emergency. So when you next connect the phone through the push cam app, it's going to automatically download it. It's then going to um, save it into the phone. And then when you get home or even under a 3G or 4G data network, it is going to automatically upload it to the push cam servers, uh, cloud servers, so you can access it from your computer. And it really means you don't have to take the SD card out all the time, which is a, a nice, nice feature. So let's get the camera in the car. We will get some footage uh, of the daytime. We're going to get some footage of the nighttime. I'm going to show you the difference between the 1080p and the 720p, uh, between 30 and 60 frames per second. And also check out that uber cool WDR, which is wide dynamic range. So hopefully that's going to make the nighttime videos look awesome. It's also going to um, make sure that that video is nice and crisp. So let's get her in. Okay, so we've popped the camera into the car and at the moment we're currently recording at 1080p at 30 frames per second. Now, it's middle of the afternoon, the light's starting to fade, so this is where cameras really need to um, work their hardest because of that low level light. And as you can see, the footage is looking pretty crisp. Now, this was, you can see the car on the left hand side, you can clearly see its number plate all the way up until just after that brown sign. where. If you're going to have an accident, you can. That's that's what you need. You need to just be able to see what's going on. Um, and as we're going across the hill, you can see really where the camera has to work hard with the light and all that sort of thing. We're not getting any blockiness. We're not getting any problems with exposure. The camera is handling it pretty pretty well. Uh, and I think so far, 1080p at 30 frames is doing pretty well for itself. So what we'll do is we'll flick over to 720 at the same uh, frame rate and uh, give that a look and see how that's going as well. So we flicked the camera over to 720, still recording at 30 frames per second. And now this is early morning, so the sun is still quite low in the sky, so the camera and the exposure is going to have to work really hard. Now, as we're going around this corner, we can clearly see the truck on the right-hand side uh, as a number plate. The footage is looking really crisp at this speed. Now, obviously that might change as you're going faster and trees and all that sort of thing, but as you can see, it's still doing pretty well for itself. Now, the benefit of having 720p over... Um, 1080 is obviously recording space. Now, if the quality is good enough, then just whip it at 720. If you ever had to use this footage uh, for an accident or something like that, 
it's, it's as long as you can prove that the car and the registration and the colors and that sort of thing that's good enough you don't need full 1080p if you don't need to so what we're going to do now is we're going to do a side by side video of the wide dynamic range uh, WDR1 and WDR2 I went around the same track uh, to get this footage so hopefully that will really show us how good this camera is at night okay so we've got the WDR1 on the left hand side we've got the WDR2 on the right hand side and I'm going over a bridge in Poole in Dorset in the UK just so that you can see how the lighting works and how the darkness works and just really how well the camera can perform now from looking at these footages uh, both settings I mean the one on the left seems a bit more fluorescent-y whereas the one on the right isn't as um, uh, the exposures handle slightly different. If you look at the street lamps, the lights are slightly different colours. So this is going to give you a real good example of what sort of quality to expect at night. Now, with other cameras such as the Black View and the My Witness, it has seemed that the quality at night has never really been that good. Not enough to be able to look at number plates and that sort of thing. But the the Vico seems to be the WF1 seems to be doing pretty well with um, handling this both. I'm going to switch the video so you can see the WDR1 on its own again full screen, and I'm going to do the WDR2 again in full screen, just 30 seconds of each. I don't want the footage too long. Um, but as you can see, the the, the it's doing really quite well for itself. It can pick, it's picking up number plates. The, the, it's not really dark, grainy footage. Uh, it's lo still looking quite crisp, especially when we're going at slower speeds. Now, okay, we're not doing it on a motorway or anything like that, but you get a real good idea of what this camera can do and how well the wide dynamic range is actually working. Uh, I think it's really good. Um, better than quite a few of its competitors out there and nighttime especially is always what I'm most worried about in terms of quality can you actually see what happened does it look good um, and I think the WF1 is uh, doing all right for itself so what we can do now is have a look at um, some 720p nighttime footage and see how that compares against the 1080 Okay, so I've flipped the camera settings via the app again, and I've changed the camera footage to 720p on wide dynamic range setting number two. So this is, when I say one and two, one is, the, is medium, two is high. Now the reason why I've gone down this uh, dual carriageway is because it's pretty dark. Um, so I wanted you to see a real good footage of what the quality is like at night. Okay, we get the fluorescent lights, they always fuzz up at night, that's just normal. But my, my lights from my car um, are quite bright because they're xenons, but you're still seeing a lot of the road. You can see the cars um, on the up ahead and on the right going past you. Now, we just saw that green sign that go past and the sign was looking pretty crisp we could re if we paused it we could freeze frame it and see what it said now we can take that same sort of approach with the um, number plates if you ever got into difficulty or you needed the footage then you could just pause it and have a look um, so we're coming up to a car now on the left hand side um, if we were to pause it there we would probably see that number plate which if there was an accident that's more than enough you've proved who it the car and who had the accident and that sort of thing. Um, so the, the WF1 is really doing quite well at night in the pitch black. It's seeing what's going on and other cameras, I mean Blackview is really good um, in terms of that they were the first to the market and that sort of thing but it's always really struggled at low light and at night time. Now I think the manufacturers really need to take this part off and board because a lot of people do driving in daytime and nighttime. Uh, they need to really cater for both times now that's what the WF1 is doing and it's doing it actually quite well um, what we're going to do next is we're just going to do a quick screenshot of or screen grab of the how you access the footage from the camera because like I mentioned previously there is no software um, to manage the, the, the file views and all that sort of thing so what we'll do is we'll flip over we're going to look at it on a Mac it's pretty similar to the PC Okay, right, so we're back in the office and we want to have a look at the footage. Now, as I mentioned, um, we don't have any firmware for the for the WF-1, in, like the Blackview and the My Witness and the Roadbook. They've all got their own software. So it acts just like a normal digital camera. So what we can do is we can just go into here. And obviously I'm using a Mac, 
you can do it with a PC, no different. Um, so let's just open it up. And see, this is where your emergency files are kept, 100 emergency. So that's when you push the button on the back of the camera, it saves them and locks them to this folder. Now, to look at the footage, uh, you go into 100 media, and here you go. Here's all your, all your files. Let's just um, change them around a little bit so we can see what's going on. So on a Mac, it's pretty easy to um, scroll through. Let's just open it up a little bit and make this bit a little bit bigger. So as we, we've got the cover art sort of style, now it's pretty easy based on the, the file names and also the timestamps which you can get if you want them. Um, you just do that by going to uh, details here, Ooh, that's probably not the right one, oh yeah, over here, uh, date modified, that's the way you're going to be able to look at the, the files and know when it was recorded, that sort of thing, and to just, just play one, um, you just choose one really so let's just go across um, this was in a petrol station you just open it up and you can just hit play now it's the same with a PC there's no real difference it's just gonna allow it's a quick and easy method of getting your footage out because you haven't got GPS on this camera um, you don't really need all the to show how it's all working uh, and looking at the movements because there's just no point just keep it simple now it's a great camera, we've been over all its features, we've been over the unboxing, you've looked at the footage. Now, all that's left to do is to go out and buy this camera, really, because it is a very good camera um, for what you're paying. They've done very well, they've, they've done a lot of things that are quite different. Now, we, like, we love doing these review videos, we love manufacturers selling us these cameras, and it really helps us out um, by if you go to our, our Facebook page, um, or if you go to our Twitter, um, give us a like, give us a follow, and if you like seeing these videos, then remember to um, hit subscribe. A button will be coming up in the bottom right hand screen down here that you can click to go to subscribe. Um, it only takes a few seconds and it makes it all worthwhile. Now, if you wanna get any of the products that we show in any of our videos, it's just www.advanced-incard.co.uk. Um, we're a distributor for quite a lot of the products as well as having engineers that can fit these up and down the UK. And we also export these cameras out of the UK all around the world via FedEx. Um, so any problems, if you need any information, just comment on the video, send us an email, send us a message on Facebook, however you wanna do it, uh, and we'll be happy to help you out where possible. Uh, thank you very much.